there are a ton of really amazing reptiles out there that just cost too much for most people's personal collections. So today let's go over the top five super awesome, super expensive reptiles and the five reptiles you can get that are kind of the same but cost a fraction of the price. My name's Adam, this is Littlefoot, you're watching Wiccan's Wiccan Reptiles, stick around. So basically, I'm going to tell you about a really cool reptile that you probably want and probably can't afford, and I'll tell you exactly what you can get that you can't afford that is very, very similar. And we'll start off, number five, black-headed pythons. Yeah, these guys look like they had their heads dipped in ink. I know, that's exactly what they look like. And what's actually kind of funny is in Australia, where they're from, people are breeding them so that they don't have black heads. So black-headed pythons that have gone through years of evolution to have black heads. So no, they don't have black heads. I don't know why you do that, Australia. And I should specify, most of these things I'm talking about are really expensive in North America and Europe. That's kind of the, the areas I'm familiar with. I know in Australia, you can only have natives and black-headed pythons probably aren't ridiculously expensive there. But here, you can expect to pay about five grand for a black-headed python. Or if you get really lucky, someone might sell you a pair for five grand. But either way, it's not gonna be cheap, it's gonna be expensive. And there's a lot of reasons that you'd want them. They're the perfect size, basically. Five to seven feet, sometimes up to eight feet, some people say bigger than that, but on average, they're kind of a perfect size snake. And in fact, they're very similar to the Woma Python, which is what you can get instead. And if you look at the difference between a black-headed python and a Woma Python, what's the difference? the black heads, right? If you take the heads off of them, don't don't take the heads off of your snakes. If the heads aren't there, they look basically very similar, almost the same. And to an untrained eye, you probably couldn't tell the difference. There are a few differences though, and some similarities. Black-headed pythons, although they have that head, they have a feeding response that is legendary. It is kind of crazy, the, the feeding response that they have. And Wilma pythons are very much the same. If you take these guys out, they're gonna think they're getting fed most of the time. So there's a little bit of coercion there to make them realize that they're not getting fed. So that is one thing to keep in mind, but they do mimic each other in that respect. So if that's one of the things that you like about these type of snakes, well, kind of translates. The other thing is they look virtually the same, which we talked about besides the heads, right? If you breed the black heads out of the black headed pythons, which why do you do this Australia? I don't get it. They look pretty much the same, very close, very similar anyway. There is a size difference. Woma pythons stay a little bit smaller, but in general, the care requirements really aren't that different between the two. Number four, indigo snakes. This snake is on everybody's dream reptile list. If you see one, especially if you've ever seen one in person, it's really no surprise why. These are one of the most amazing, majestic looking creatures. And if you get the opportunity to handle one, they're a big, thick snake. In fact, they're the longest colubrid in all of North America. You're gonna find them, I'll throw a map up in this area here, in the US. So it's kind of weird because although they're everyone's dream reptile and super rare and unbelievably expensive, we're talking like between a thousand and two thousand dollars, depending on your area, right? Here I know we sell them for about 1500 for hatchlings. So you think like, well, why aren't they like a bull snake where you can just find them everywhere and they're super cheap or like a milk snake, whatever, because you can go out and field collect them in part of the country. They're a little bit more difficult to breed for one. And they're also endangered in a lot of places. And I guess, okay, what can I get that looks like this? Mexican black king snakes, the poor man's indigo snake, a lot of people call them. The big difference here though, is the indigo is much larger than a Mexican black king. So if instead what you don't like is the black, right? You just like something that is curious and uh, like, kind of there, you know, like they're there with it. This is not a good example. This is a little foot, the leopard gecko. She has no idea what's going on. If you pick up an indigo snake, they know exactly what's going on. Bull snakes might be a better option for you because they're a big colubrid. They're one of the bigger colubrids in North America. They're big and they're thick and they're long and they're just, they're, they're, they're giant colubrids. So if it's the size and the personality, let's call it, that you like, bull snakes. If it's not, Mexican black kings. But the interesting thing is, bull snakes, depending on your area, if you're from parts of, say, Minnesota, Wisconsin, whatever, I know that in that area, you can get them for cheap. They're all over the place. You find them in the wild there. They're not endangered by any means. But Mexican black king snakes, 
they're actually going up in value. Uh, even 10 years ago, I, or even longer ago when I got into the hobby, you could find them for 50 bucks all day long on every expo table. Now, 200 bucks, 250, 400. In my area, I live in Canada, 500 bucks I've seen them go for. They're not cheap anymore. So they used to be the poor man's indigo snake. They're still about half the price or even less than that. But uh, I mean, if, if you're into that sort of thing, get them now. They're only going up. Number three, shinglebacks. Now everyone probably knows what these are. These are one of the more interesting and more sought after animals and one of the most expensive in the whole reptile hobby. These guys are not cheap at all. Again, in Australia, a little bit cheaper, but there is a very similar closely related cousin that I've got in my personal collection. But let's go over, why would you want a shingleback in the first place? Well, it looks like a skink that's about to go into battle with this nubby little tail. They are absolutely amazing looking, but what can you get instead? Blue tongue skinks, Indonesians or Northerns, whatever, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, the blue tongue skinks look very similar. The difference is what kind of care requirements do you want? If you want something more similar to a shingleback, then get yourself a Northern blue tongue skink, all right? These are gonna have a more similar type of care requirement. These guys are going to need a drier environment where with an Indonesian, they're gonna need a more moist environment. This is Irwin. My boy Irwin here is an Indonesian blue tongue skink. He needs lots and lots of humidity. Full care guide up here for blue tongue skinks if you're interested. So it's a perfect option for you. Of course they look different, but in terms of handling and temperament and the way that they're curious, and a lot of people will say, ah, oh, they're just big old potatoes that just kind of sit there. Tell that to Irwin. He's zooming around all the time and not zooming around trying to get away from you. He's just curious and he's like going over his log and wandering on the carpet. And the people that I've spoken to who actually have shinglebacks in their personal collections or have worked with them in zoos, they say they're very, very similar. The big difference is the look, a little bit of difference in care requirements. Again, you guys make fun of me, but this isn't a care guide. Do your research, but very similar. So if you want a shingleback, but you don't really have a thousand dollars or more to spend on one, well, get yourself a blue tongue skink because you can get those all day long for 300 bucks, 400 bucks. Northerns are more expensive. Indonesians you can get for a little bit cheaper sometimes. I kind of noticed a trend here. Everything that I'm suggesting isn't even really that cheap to begin with. So I guess we're gonna call this really, really expensive, but substitution that's only kind of expen- All right, we'll move on. Number two, Boland's pythons. One of the most beautiful and majestic looking snakes that there are. I think I described the indigo as that as well. But anyway, something similar about them. These guys are black and extremely iridescent. And if you're not part of the reptile world or you're just coming into it and you're not sure what that means, it means they look like a rainbow under sunlight. It kind of looks like you're staring at a pool of oil in the sun. That's what they look like uh, and that's what iridescence is. It, it's actually amazing to look at them because they are black and there's a bunch of other animals that have this iridescence, but normally they've got some sort of color. Where are you going? Where with these guys, they're black and have a little bit of white in their face and stuff, but very interesting. And these guys spend most of their time in the trees, so they've got that arboreal type factor, which a lot of people really like. I need a whole video about arboreal snakes right here if you're interested. So I think that these guys have this cool factor that most other animals don't, most other reptiles don't. The thing is, in most parts of the world, you are gonna be hard pressed to find one of these guys in a personal collection. They are very hard to find because they are super hard to breed and they're expensive. And most people don't have thousands of dollars for one snake. So what can you get instead? I'm gonna give you a two for one on this one as well. If it's something that's big and robust because they do get to about 10 feet, by the way, eight to 10 feet, they're big snakes. So if you want something big and robust that hangs out in the trees, that has this temperament where they're a little bit nippy, but not so ridiculous you can never handle them, carpet pythons, coastal carpet pythons are your best bet if you're really going for the size. But all carpet pythons are arboreal or semi-arboreal and they come from kind of the same part of the world. So very interesting, but they look completely different. Although carpet pythons look absolutely stunning. Carpet pythons are one of the most beautiful snakes that don't cost the same as a car that you could possibly have. But if you're in it for that iridescence, there's a few snakes I could suggest for this, but the easiest one for you to find would be a Brazilian rainbow boa. Brazilian rainbow boas are pretty easy to find. They're not super expensive. Depending, some parts of the States, I know you guys have them for like 200 bucks. In my area, closer to three or four, likely. 
but these guys are a little bit more difficult to care for as babies. We've gone over this in, in a few episodes uh, before, but they don't really, they're not arboreal like a Boland's Python, not in the same way. They don't get to the same size. They're gonna be a little bit smaller. At the end of the day, there's really no proper placeholder for any of these snakes or lizards that I'm bringing up. They're all unique to themselves. It's just most people can't really afford how many times do I have to say most people can't afford thousands of dollars for reptiles? And I'll throw a third one in there for you. For those of you who can actually find them and can afford them, because they are expensive as well, but not as expensive as Boland's pythons, white lip pythons. They look kind of similar. They're iridescent. They look awesome. All of pythons. Okay, like how many? All right, can we move on to our best one? Number one most expensive reptile and the substitution that you can actually afford, tegus. Now, I know you're thinking, most part, most of you, from most parts of the U.S., tegus aren't expensive. What are you talking about? I can get a black and white tegu for 400 bucks. That is true. But to build or to buy an enclosure for these guys is ridiculous. Anything, I really could have put anything on the list. I could have put Burmese pythons or whatever. But at the end of the day, here's what I would like to say. Black and white tegus are amazing. They are absolutely fantastic. A dream reptile, as soon as I have the space, you'll see one in my collection. But they need space. They need a lot of space. Something like an eight foot by four foot by four foot enclosure. Crazy. There are available ones on the market, like from my friends at Cages, who I'd highly recommend checking out. There's a link in the description, the best cages on the market, period. But most people can't afford to spend over a thousand dollars on the enclosure, plus whatever it costs to furnish the enclosure and the ongoing cost of things like UVB light and food and vet visits and things like that. So what can you get that is very curious and very smart, which is what tagus are known and loved for, but isn't a tagu and doesn't need that much space. Jeweled Lacertas. This is my boy Bob, who actually is spending his whole summer outside. He's outside in this enclosure right here for the summer. This is one of the most fun reptiles in my whole collection to watch. He is always out, he's always basking, he's always having a good time, except for in the summer when I shot this video and He's just hiding all the time. It's very hard to get a hold of him. But inside, he would rather come up to the glass and try to bite you because he thinks that you are food than to run away. He's always out. Same thing with tagus is they're very curious. They're not one of those reptiles where they're just going to scurry along and try to hide as soon as you come into the room. These guys are kind of hams. They like to be involved in what's going on a lot of the times. And of course there are exceptions. And with Bob, he is a different case. He's got metabolic bone disease. He came to me like that. So he doesn't act or look like a lot of specimens that you'd find. So if he looks a little bit skinny and weird, it's just because he's got metabolic bone disease, which is the thing, right? Because with these animals, tegus, jeweled lacertas, whatever, they need a UVB light. So that is an extra consideration with this species, I guess, with these two species. But at the end of the day, if you want something like a tegu, you're going to need to have a UVB light for a jewel lacerta anyway. It's just going to have less real estate. A jeweled lacerta, which you can watch the care guide right here, a jeweled lacerta will need something like a 4 by 2 by 2 So literally like, what, what's that? Half the space? Less than half the space? So it just is more feasible, and it's of course much easier to find these enclosures, and it's much more easy to, much more easy, it's much easier to make these enclosures if you choose to do that, and it's easier to find them as well. These enclosures are easy to find, easier to build if you choose to do that, and way easier to afford. The cost of something that is like this, again, this cage's enclosure that I've fallen in love with, which is four by two by two, which would be perfect for someone like Bob, any jeweled Lacerta, is going to be a fraction of the price of what you need for a fully grown tagu. But if you're looking for something that's curious, looks absolutely gorgeous, one of the most beautiful reptiles in the entire hobby, in my opinion, is the black and white tagu and the jeweled Lacerta, and they both have not similar diets. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't characterize them as similar, but the variation of their diet is something that the both of them share. So I really do think that jeweled lacertas are kind of like mini tagus in that sense. So there you go. My top five super expensive reptiles and their substitutions, what you can actually afford instead. What'd you think? Did I forget something? I want to say a special thank you to one of the Discord users, Anwar. Thank you so much for the idea. This was one of the better ones I pulled out. But every week, 
I take an idea out of the comment section, throw it down there. Maybe next week we'll do your video idea. And a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. Thank you guys for backing me. I really appreciate it. I love putting these videos out a few days early for you guys, giving you some extra content and some extra pictures. There's one that I'm posting right now. The turtle's got a really awesome upgrade. If you want to see stuff like that, as little as a dollar a month, Patreon. I'd really appreciate it. And for everybody else, whether you're buying the merch or just watching the videos, they get to chill out with one of my favorite reptiles, by the way, Littlefoot. Talk to a camera. And you guys watch it. So thank you guys. I, I really appreciate it. And I think I've plugged everything now. Hit subscribe. See you on Thursday.